Restore the Park uh, uh, campaign started about four years ago. Uh, we started envisioning um, how we could restore the historical structures that we had here at Arnold's Park Amusement Park back to their uh, back to their glory days of the roof garden down along the lakefront. The roof garden project here in particular, we did demolition of the uh, the roof garden just after Labor Day of last year, September of 2018, and we uh, finished the facility and opened it up here this past Friday on uh, August the 2nd. What we wanted to bring to the area was a first-class event center and a first-class live music venue. Uh, we felt that that was a gap that we had on the property here and that uh, the reconstruction of the roof garden could serve those purposes. So um, in mind throughout the entire construction was to build a year-round facility, something that could be heated and cooled and used not just only during the summer months but through the entire uh, calendar year. Uh, and certainly we accomplished that with what we built here today. Secondly, we wanted a building that was going to be top-notch in terms of sound so that we could bring in the best live music in the region and around the country into this facility uh, and have them enjoy playing here. The original roof garden was built in 1823 and uh, originally it was built to as a summer attraction for those who came in by train. Actually one of the railroads had money into the development of the roof garden. Uh, the wooden structure uh, looked just like it did in 23 as much as it did in 1968 you know before the tornado came through so it was a beautiful you know wooden structure didn't have air conditioning or heat open the windows let the cool lake breezes supposedly cool you down and it was a summer destination for all the touring big bands in 1956 new owners took the ballroom over and one thing that's common about ballrooms in this time period was that all ballroom owners were former big band musicians. So they were all about the big bands and they wanted big band in their ballroom or nothing. Uh, but the three new owners didn't care about that. To begin with, they didn't use the name rock and roll because they were a little scared at the reaction of moms and dads in the community and the business community. So they were teen hops, sock hops, dance shows, teen dances, anything that you could think of you know to kind of hide what was going on behind the curtain but what it did is it brought kids in from all over the region and this became pretty much this park became a huge mecca for teens and of course as teens go some as so goes mom and dad so tourism just grew and grew and grew during that time period and music was a big part of that so when it came to uh, the 60s, you know, getting the Beach Boys and the Turtles and the Yardbirds and the Birds uh, into that ballroom at Lake Okoboji, um, it was all because of the network that had been built years before into that rock and roll world. We wanted to make sure that we had a facility that had the sound properties that would really pay tribute to the, the great acts of the past that came through the original roof garden. So from the sound system to the acoustical panels, we wanted to support those acts and all the great acts played the old roof garden from Johnny Cash to the Beach Boys to Jerry Lee Lewis, Roy Orbison, uh, the list goes on and on. So we wanted to have a venue that could uh, pay tribute to that and support those kind of acts coming through. And I truly believe that facility will create new fans, new dreams for decades to come. You know, my grandkids and their kids will still be coming back to Okaboji to hear really fantastic music at the Roof Garden. And uh, I couldn't be more excited.